All right, so we're checking out the Cinerace 20, the DJI 03 edition. I have done a couple of the videos on the Cinerace 20. Uh, I think the last one was January of 2022, and then the one before that was October 2021. Uh, so this is model's been around a while. They've made a lot of updates and modifications. There's version one, version 1 1.2, and version two. I guess this is technically version three. And uh, version 1.2 is uh, from about a year ago. This is the January 2020 edition with the, this here has the uh, DJI Vista in it. And then Caddx Polar Camera or Polar Nano Camera. So I'm going to refer you to those videos if you want to see all the detailed specs on the models. The There's not a lot of differences. I'll point out the differences here in this video, obviously, on the O3 edition. The semi-different motor KB version on this one, this one here is 4850 KB, and then the version 1.2 was 3400 KB. So uh, they have different PID tunes, and I'm pretty sure they've updated it since then. If you're wondering about a PID tune for this, uh, contact F Flywoo, because they are constantly tweaking them. And so the one I have is probably not going to be the most current version uh, if you're watching this video in the far future. And uh, they, they probably have it up on their support site as they uh, do the further updates. So uh, we'll get right into what the differences are here. So basically the main part of the frame here, the ducts, uh, you know, are basically the same. The same 1203 motors. And I point out the differences in the KV here. This one here is 4850 KV. I ran it on a 4S450 LiPo. Getting roughly 4 to 5 minutes of flight time depending on how you're flying it. And flying conditions and you can also put bigger batteries on here 750s 900s if you want to get a lot more flight time so uh, nice wide profile here for the duct doesn't fly that great in wind as you'll see in the flight footage I'll link the 4k um, uh, stabilized footage in gyroflow I use the gyroflow program to stabilize that footage and that'll be uh, linked in the video description as well check that out if you want to see how Good, the footage can be stabilized, but you'll see in the wind this thing gets pushed around. I'll put the uh, goggle DVR footage here. You can see how much it gets pushed around compared to the stabilized footage, which looks a lot looks a lot better. Uh, mainly has to do with these big ducts that have tend to act as air dams, and when there's a lot of wind, as you see on see in this uh, f sample flight footage of 15, 20 mile an hour, mile an hour wind, this little guy is a hard, very hard to fly because it gets pushed around quite a lot thanks to these large ducks um, so I would recommend flying this outdoors in very little to no wind or mainly indoors and that's something small like this is probably going to be more ideal for indoor environments as I said there's been previously a lot of versions of this one I think they still sell the version 2 which is for the older analog and other digital systems so if you want to get the walk snail version or the analog version or the DJI, I guess the Vista version, those are still available. Those will be linked in the other videos, but basically they modified this frame to accommodate the O3 air unit, which is similar in dimension to the Vista air unit, um, but there's a few changes, mainly uh, this one right here. As you can see, there's a cutout there for the USB-C port, so you can access that and get the files off of there. The Before they install the air unit, in the drone, obviously you can see that the micro SD card uh, slot is inaccessible, so you have to pull the files off by connecting to the USB-C port, and they do provide an adapter because you'll need a right angle adapter like this to be able to um, get to that USB-C port to get to your files. So you put that in like so, and it works fine, no problems. Um, You'll have access to both the internal, like I think 24 gigabytes of uh, internal storage, as well as the 128 gigabytes of uh, the uh, micro SD card storage that's already installed in this one. So that's not that's not normally included in the DJI O3 Air Unit. The Flywoo, Flywoo has included that in here because of the fact that the design doesn't allow you to access the micro SD card slot to pop it out. So they put that in there for you. It's a SanDisk 128 gigabyte micro SD card and then when you plug this in via USB you get actually two extra USB drives to show up and all your footage will be on there depending on where you elected to record your footage you can 
change that in the goggle settings if you want to switch it from the internal storage or the micro SD card storage. So they made a little bit different antenna mount here for the DJI antenna. I think it's slightly smaller because this, this stem is a little bit smaller. Um, same uh, location for the receiver. In this case, it's an Express LRS receiver and also the location for the antenna. Other receiver versions that you might get, like TBS, might have slightly different configurations. Same LED that goes all the way around here. And this one, even though it's yellow or kind of whitish, it's actually a blue colored LED when you turn it on. If it's the same uh, flight controller, uh, you have a micro USB port here on the bottom. It's like an F405, like seven UARTs. I uh, believe the uh, the gyro is not updated on that flight controller. It's no longer an MP6000, it's an ICM gyro, but it seems to be fine with the uh, PID tune that's on here. You can see you have a, a little power supply here for the LEDs. Uh, there, used, there used to be a switch here, and that's actually listed on their product page, but I don't see a switch on this one that you can turn the lights on and off. I'm not sure what's up with that. And then there is a buzzer now added over here on this side. On the top, we have our uh, Nano GPS. This is their new uh, part of their new GPS series. I can get like 20, 30 satellites. Uh, this is the Nano version. It's super tiny, as you can see here. They're very, very, very small. It's, it's actually embedded in this, this TPU mount here. Um, the regular sized GPS is on there. Uh, the, the Explorer LR4 O3 edition that I reviewed like a month ago. And then there's a larger one with a compass. That's like their bigger bigger GPS. That I think I talked about those three in the Explorer LR4 video. So go back about a month on my channel. You can uh, hear me talk about that. The props are the same as before, five-bladed gym fans. They seem to be pretty good, not too loud with this duck configuration. And then the, obviously the biggest difference here is the front camera cage area, totally different here. It's a TPU part for holding the um, O3 air unit camera. Um, now they're saying, they're advertising on their product page that there's no jello. Uh, you know, is this the camera still hard mounted? I personally find that to be less than ideal, especially if you're um, getting a lot of vibrations from wind. Surprisingly, I didn't see much jello. You can check out the 4K footage, and uh, if you want to look at it really carefully, let me know if you guys see anything, and specifically timestamps as to where you specifically saw massive amounts of jello, which I couldn't find. I, I thought I saw a little bit of like shakes here and there, but very hard to find. So surprisingly, this mount design did better than I expected. I personally like the camera to be to be like soft mounted or vibration dampened completely. So just, any vibrations that come from the motors, the frame are isolated from this camera unit because the gyro that's on here is also sensitive to vibrations. And that will also then eventually affect your um, stabilized footage that you're gonna get uh, from gyro flow. So that's what I got out of this one. This, I updated the firmware on the O3 air unit. It came with like the old firmware from last year. I think all O3 units that are come with like very old firmware. So the first thing you need to do is activate your O3 air unit and update it to the latest firmware so that you get all those features like 10-bit uh, color, decent alike, and also the gyro flow uh, stabilization, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll need to update the firmware, so make sure you do that. As you can see here, I have these uh, Flywoo ND filters. This is the ND8, and uh, they sent along those as well. So it comes in this case here. Get some wipes. Um, it comes in a set of seven. So the seventh one is this. Uh, I think it's just a just a UV filter. And they look like this. So this is for clear. So basically, it doesn't actually change the um, brightness at all. And you can see the design of how. It just hooks into the top there. And there's actually four like little things that stick out on this top, bottom, left, and right. And that's how the um, uh, the uh, filter is actually mounted to the O3 air unit camera. And then you get a cleaning cloth. And then this is the case that holds the rest of them. So you get an ND4, ND8, ND16, 3264. And this one's a CPL filter, a polarizing filter. So this is uh, gonna be good for maybe the situations where you're not necessarily, it's like super bright out, but you're gonna be in a situation where you have like a lot of reflections, like water, 
or snow. So that could be could be useful for that. And then this uh, little cover is magnetic, closes like so. Obviously the MD8 pull, pulled it off of there and I have it installed. And it is a little bit tricky getting this on here. I might I would recommend sticking it on the bottom first and then pushing it in on top. Because I think this TPU part is a little bit soft in terms of allowing the camera to sort of move a little bit. I think that helps with the vib vibration dampening, but that also prevents the filter from getting on very easily because the camera gets pushed back a little bit. So just keep pushing. Um, it'll eventually snap into place. You want to make sure you hear a click. Otherwise, if it's just kind of on part of the way, it'll vibrate off and you'll lose it. And this thing is tiny and it's really pretty hard to find. So as you notice, they put the GPS here right on top where the, um, on the older versions, that's where the HD camera would go, or see like a naked GoPro or Insta360 Go2, something like that, or Cat Peanut. And obviously in this situation, this, this uh, the, the video footage out of the O3 unit is probably as good as, um, you know, most naked GoPros or an Insta360 Go, probably better. Uh, so there's kind of pointless in having an extra camera mount here and also would make it a lot heavier than 250 grams, which would kind of, kind of defeats the purpose of having something like this, which is why they designed it like this, where they decided to add the GPS feature for return to home instead of having the additional camera mount. So if you want this model and you want to fly with a naked GoPro, uh, you'll just have to go for the older version with the like the old the, the DJI Vista, and then that'll have a camera mount area there for you. Um, this is not really meant for using it with a camera mount. All right, so see how much things this weighs here. It's going to be well under 250 grams. It's 200 or it's 141.7 grams. And then obviously with a uh, Force 450, we're going to be at 195. So obviously you got about a uh, good 55 grams there for a bigger battery. So you can go up to like a 750, you should still be um, probably under the 250 gram mark. So not surprisingly, uh, in terms of flight characteristics, it's pretty much the same as the older versions of this model. Basically, the motor, the power system, and the way the ducts and the, uh, you know the way this thing is just the way it's distributed around here is the same. So it doesn't feel any different, in my opinion. I didn't notice any differences, and of course, things like wind are going to highly affect this this model because of the fact that it's such a tall duct. So wind is really bad for this kind of a design. So really no differences. So if you want to hear my full discussion on how it flies, uh, I refer you to those other videos, the older ones. Previously, those will be like linked down in the video description. But that'll do it for this one. Uh, check out the footage, check out the 4K footage and also the DVR footage. Let me know what you guys think uh, in terms of the Jello, how much you think there is, how bad it is, when you saw it, if you saw any. Uh, would be curious to see if you caught anything that I perhaps missed. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.